Hello and a warm welcome to my studio. This scene here is of me doing preparation for my morning page and I've been doing this morning page routine for about two weeks and during that two weeks I was really just playing around with gouache and specifically I found this book where I was inspired by impressionist painting styles and I wanted to recreate some of the paintings and textures using gouache. In today's video, I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to just sit down, chat and for you to watch me to paint. I wanted to also allow you to get to know a little bit more about me and my journey and what made me decide to do this full time. Let's start with a little context. So I've always loved to doodle as a kid and I've always been really drawn to art, colours, drawings and I was one of those kids that would be really contented just sitting down with my colouring book and I could colour all day long. And I was literally in this imaginary space or imaginary world where I would just draw things up and doodle and this was really something that Honestly, sometimes my teachers were not really pleased with because they didn't like that I was doodling and daydreaming during class. So as you can imagine, I was very much a right brain child. I loved to not just doodle and draw, but I was also very drawn to dance and I loved ballet and music. But this is the thing that happened. When you go to school, you start to slowly let go of some of these things that were called play. You know, we start to lose our creativity because suddenly homework, assignments and examinations were more important. And this is where I felt like life took over and started to make decisions for me and I really let go of that creative self that I used to own and have as a child. I started to spend less and less time playing. In fact, I was spending a lot more time doing serious things like studying. And of course, when you're a teenager, you also try and socialize and try and belong with your friends and all of those other things that prioritized and took over art. Now, after I had kids, this is where I had to rediscover my playful self again and I had to start to ask myself what I wanted of my kids. Now speaking of kids, here is my youngest who is right here watching me paint and she's woken up and as I mentioned, this was my morning page time. So most of the time my kids would come in and they would take a look at my painting and they would kind of see what I've been doing and what I've been up to. So right here is where I'm going to have to stop my painting and get the kids breakfast and things ready. After I've settled my kids' breakfast, I usually come up and sneak in one or two strokes. And this is also because I'm midway into flow, so it's really hard to stop. And I kind of have a frame of mind where I want to keep going. And this is where I'm just sneaking in a couple of strokes just to sneak in and hope that um, my husband doesn't come up and find out that I'm actually painting. So I am, um, so I skipped a couple of steps in the story because I actually went into watercolor when I suffered from fertility issues. Now, the thing is, my husband and I were married for about three years and we were trying for kids and it was not really. And when I went into all of those doctor's visits, I started to get into this cycle of just googling and finding out about all of these terminology and medicines that the doctors were giving me and all of these forums. Now the thing about the internet is that it's wonderful for 
its rich resource, but it can also be such a black hole when it comes to information because you get to know from one thing to the next and to the next and sometimes some of these things were really not helpful for my mental health when it came to learning about fertility issues. So I discovered my creative self again when I was knee deep into my fertility treatments. When I was actually doing my fertility treatments, one of my best friends asked me out one day and she asked if I wanted to just, you know, go to an art store and just buy a couple of supplies, go to the park and just paint plein air. And I thought, what a great idea. So that's what we did. And when I went through that, it really sparked this feeling in me this familiar sense of freedom that I used to have as a child, just playing and exploring. And at that time, I had a full-time job as a psychologist in a clinic. So it was a nice escape to go back into where I would go for my job and then I would go home and I would rush to paint. And I was really excited every time I got home because it felt like I had this new purpose, newfound purpose where I had lost before as a child and I was kind of revisiting it and it really helped me to get distracted from my fertility treatments and all of that. Now, as I continued to develop my art, I created an Instagram account called crafty.fox and I wanted it to be kind of like a blog or a journal to document my journey as I was continuing. The more I did the art, the more attention I got and I started to become part of this art community where I realized that there were other people who were also doing watercolor and there were so many different resources that I started to get to know about and people that I befriended online. It was really such a wide scope of things that were happening on social media. Now, this is also where people got to know about my art. And of course, I had requests and people asked if they could commission me to do art for their homes or even for weddings. And over time, I started to wonder to myself if I could do art as a business. And what was stopping me really was that I felt like I had studied so hard and done a master's and graduated, did a thesis, did so many different things for psychology. And just to drop all of that to do art felt like such a huge waste. I think a huge part of me was also feeling really scared with the fact that I knew that I was good at the art, but I wasn't sure about the business aspect. I didn't know how I was going to market my art or how I was going to sell or what avenues were available for me when it came to my art. On the day that I decided to make Crafty Fox an official side hustle and buy a domain, have a website, was the same day that I found out that I got pregnant. And the a couple of failed IVF rounds so this was really such a blessing and when I found out it was literally this feeling of that I had birthed two things or at least I was growing two things because you know I was growing crafty fox and then I was also growing a human within me so there was something poetic about that very moment. While I was pregnant, I started to run workshops. I also did commission work for weddings. And the workshops that I did were actually just brush lettering workshops because that was what I started with. And I wasn't very confident in teaching watercolor. In fact, I hadn't done real watercolor workshops in person because I felt like I didn't have the confidence to showcase what exactly the different skills were. I felt like all I knew was to demonstrate, but really it was more than demonstration. Now let's fast forward to 2021, where I had actually taken a long hiatus after my firstborn was born. And from 2018 to 2021, I didn't do any art. I stopped doing all of my commissions and my workshops. And while a part of me was missing 
doing art, I also felt like my priority at that time was really just to be a mom and care for my kids. Now, in 2021, I gave birth to my third born, and this is when I suddenly felt like I needed more than just to be a mom. And I started to sneak in small pockets of time during her naps to paint. And sometimes I wouldn't even get much done and I would just only have half a painting done. But these small little moments really helped me to gain clarity of what I really wanted. That at the end of the day, what really sparked so much joy and passion in me was the art. And also getting to be with my kids and watching them grow. And this was really the catalyst for me to decide that I could always go back to psychology at some point. And who knows, you know, maybe I don't even have to go back to it. At least not right now. But I wanted to do the two things that were important to me, which was art and to also watch my kids grow up. If you have come this far, I ran my first Zoom workshop in July 2022 and up to now, I have been running a number of workshops. I now host a watercolor community and I have to say there are so many different opportunities and avenues for me in this art space. I've been really excited to not just be part of it, but also help to grow this community of like-minded people and I hope that listening to my conversation here today has sparked a few ideas for you to think about. Art does not have to stay a hobby or you could also see it in a different way depending on where you want it to be. I find that it's so important to eventually decide on what brings you joy and then slowly make small baby steps towards it like I did. I still don't have all the answers when it comes to business or even when it comes to watercolor but what I know is that at this point in time this is something that I'm so passionate about and I really want to share and I thank you for being part of this space that I'm growing and creating.